What's up guys and welcome back to the fifth episode of my Python tutorial series. In this video we are going to go over for and while loops, which are two different ways to repeatedly execute blocks of code. Also I want to mention that once you finish this video you'll have enough skills to build a basic game in Python. So make sure you look in the description for a link on how to build this game that I'll show you right now. Basically, it's a simple game where you're controlling the red block by moving the left and right arrow keys. And these blue blocks are falling and you're trying to dodge them. And basically, the score goes up each time you successfully dodge a blue block, it gets to the bottom. And as the score increases, the blue blocks start falling faster and faster. And if I ever do collide with a blue block, it says down here, game over your score. So this is the game that we will be able to build once you finish all the things that we cover in this video. All right, let's get started. All right, let's begin with a for loop. So let's say I wanted to print out the words, hello world, 10 times, but I didn't wanna just type out, you know, print hello world and copy and paste that 10 times. Like that's kind of annoying. So we can use a for loop to, sim like, to simplify this for us. So what I can do instead of just copy and pasting is I can do for i in range 10. And then make sure you end this for, for loop with a colon. And then I can just do print hello world. And I run that. And as you can see down below, it printed out hello world 10 times, just like I wanted. All right, so that's just a basic example and I can change this to whatever value I want. So range is how many times you want it to loop through. So if I did it a hundred times, you see that I have a hundred hello worlds now and it does it really, really quickly. It's worth noting that in this statement, so if I go back to range 10, so in this statement, this I variable right here represents what iteration we're on. So I could do something like print i instead. And if I did for i in range 10 and then I printed i, it's gonna print out the numbers zero through nine. And it starts at zero. Um, the, the main reason it starts at zero is just like indexing. We count, we count starting from zero in Python, but it does include 10 iterations. So zero through nine is 10 total. 10 right here is the first number that we don't include. So we can print out i. And we don't just have to do print statements in here. We can make this more complex. So let's say I just wanted to print out uh, odd numbers, for example. So if I just wanted to print out odd numbers, I could do something like if i mod two, so this uh, means like divided and check the remainder, equals equals one. So that would make it odd. Do a colon too, because whenever we have something inside, we always have to use a colon and indent. Um, and then I'll do we don't have to use an else, but I can do an else. Else, we'll just do nothing. Just, we can write this pass word. As you can see there, one, three, five, seven, and nine. So we can make our for loops a little bit more complex, but this I is just like a placeholder. So if I, instead, this, this is just like variables, you know, we can call it whatever we want. It's just gonna be holding the variable for us. So like when we were writing functions, and we passed in a, a variable to the function name, this is the same thing, it's just a placeholder. So I could call this like uh, cactus. For cactus in range 10, print cactus. And as you can see, it does the zero to nine, just like we had for when we just did print i. One of the most useful reasons we use a for loop is to iterate through lists. So as you should have learned in the last video about lists, we can declare lists such as a grocery list by doing the following, use these two brackets and then insert our items inside. So let's say we wanted uh, milk, toast, eggs, and avocados. So that's our grocery list. Instead of doing for cactus in range 10, I'm gonna actually change this to in grocery list for cactus in grocery list and cactus does not make the most sense to use here so we're going to just say for item in grocery list it doesn't matter what we call it as long as we 
use the same value inside the for loop. So for item and grocery list, this will take the list defined by the grocery list and just take the first element, then the second element, then the third element, and then the fourth element. And each time we get a new element, we can access that element by this right here. So if I run this, as you can see, milk prints out on one line, toast prints out on one line, eggs prints out on one line, and avocados prints out on one line. So this iterated through a list. And we don't have to just use you know, words, we can also do this with numbers. So let's say uh, I wanted to pass in some weights. So I'm, I'm gonna just, I took this, this information from online, but I'm passing in the weights of some players on a professional sports team and bonus points to the person who watches this video and can figure out which sports team these values are coming from. So here are the values. So we have weights. These are the weights of all the players on this sports team. As you can see, there's a bunch of them. What we can do with that is we can iterate through each weight in that list with this for loop. So for weight in weights. And if I print out the weight, as you can see below, it grabs each of one, each one of them and it prints it out on a new line. All right, so this is cool, but we're usually gonna to wanna to do something more complex than simply, than simply print out like a single value. We wanna do something with these values. So for example, let's say we wanted to find the average weight of a player on this team. So if I did average weight, so how do we calculate average weight? So if I was doing this mathematically, I would take each one of these values and weights, add them all up, and then divide by the total number of weights there are. So what I can do is I'm gonna define a variable called total weight outside of this for loop. And total weight, before we take any of these numbers from the players, it's just gonna be set to zero. What we're gonna do is on each iteration, we're gonna add the weight that we're currently looking at. So in the first iteration, we would add 208 to our total weight. So I can do total weight equals total weight plus weight. So this takes our cumulative sum and adds the one we're currently looking at to it. And then if we get to the bottom, I'm just gonna print out total weight. And the total weight of all these players is just under 5,000 pounds. So if you were to line them all up, squish them together and put them on a scale, that's what the team would weigh. So, and also worth noting is I don't have to do total weight equals total weight plus weight. There's actually a shortcut to do this command and that is plus equals. So instead of doing total weight equals total weight plus weight, if I just do total weight plus equals weight, it takes whatever total weight was set before and adds weight to it and then resets it to total weight. So if I run this, it's still the same thing. All right, and then to get the average weight of a player, we just need to know the total number of weights there are in this list. And from the last video, you might remember the command length, L-E-N. So we can use the command um, number of players we'll call equals length, L-E-N, of the weights variable. So now if I print out number of players, we have this amount of pounds for this amount of players. And then finally, what we wanted to do was the average weight of a player on this team. And we can do print total weight divided by number of players. So this is a useful way we can kind of use statistics, use Python to aid in our statistics. So the average weight of a player on this team is 199 pounds. And we could easily uh, adapt, you know, keep going farther. I'm gonna not do it in this video just for the sake of time, but we could keep going. We could find the standard div, we could find uh, quartiles and whatnot using this for loop kind of in, in aid of this process.
Also, I want to mention real quick that this method that we did right now does for weight and weights, and it grabs the individual weight. So if I was printing out each weight, you should have seen this before, but I'll do it again. It going from the top starts with 208, then 221, just as this goes. Another way to do this is by instead of using the actual weight, we find the index in the range of the length of weights. So what I'm doing right now is instead of directly grabbing this 208, I'm, I'm instead just setting an index that will contain all the indexes in however long this weights is. So now I can print out index. And this is going to give me an error because I didn't define weight. I'll just say weight is zero for now. Don't worry about this. So, but what you can see is I'm printing out the index. It's counting zero to 24, which represents the 25 positions a player can have in this graph. And what we can do is with that index, we can grab a weight as follows. We can do total or weights. That's the list of the weights. And then do brackets and then index. So we're grabbing the weight that is found in the indexed position. So when this is zero on the first iteration, we grab weights zero and that is 208. So this is just another way to do the same exact thing we just I just showed you before. And sometimes this can be a useful way to do it, not always, but it is good to see that you can do this method and just grab the indexes and then set it down here. So now if I run this, we have that same value we had before. And just keep note of this because maybe we can use this in the end of the, the video, you'll need to grab multiple indexes at the same time. So if we do it this method, we can do like weight two equals weights of index plus one, and we can grab two different weights at the same exact time. So just note this method. Before I finish with for loops, one of the advanced methods that, I guess it's not that advanced, but one thing that is that is help, helps me a lot when I'm maybe iterating through a Excel spreadsheet is using this enumerate keyword. So if I use this enumerate keyword, I can grab the index and the weight at the same time. It gives me both. So I do like index comma weight. It will give me the index of this position and also the actual value at that position, which is sometimes helpful to, to know both of those things. So if I do that and I print index and I print weight, and I run it down here, you should see 0, 208. 1, 221. So this enumerate keyword allows us to get both the index and the weight. All right, let's move on to while loops. So I'm going to delete all this code here. All right, to introduce while loops, basically think of a while loop as an if statement that repeatedly checks itself over and over again. So if I did something like if true, let's just say, and then I printed like, hello world, right? And I ran that it would just print out that hello world one time. A while, state, a while loop, however, does the following. So if I did while true print hello world, this is basically like plain English. Like what would you think would happen while something was true uh, and you had it inside that? It just repeatedly prints out hello world. So you can't, let me change up this example a little bit so you can see more visually, but if I printed hello world and then, uh, Hi again. Two different lines. You see that it just is continually running these, these two print statements over and over and over again. And that's going to keep happening until this true becomes false. So to show you an example where that type of thing would happen, I'm going to cancel this real quick. So if you go to tools, you can cancel a, a, a while loop if it's infinitely running. This is called an infinite loop. Uh, you can cancel it by going into your tools and then cancel build or control slash break, control plus play break or command plus plus plus. I literally can't talk right now. C 
Command plus break if you're on a Mac. So let's imagine this is just like a for loop. So in a for loop, we can count to 10. We can also do the same thing in a while loop. So let's say I said i equals zero while i is less than 10, print i, and then we did i plus equals one. So I ran this, I print out zero through nine because it keeps printing out i when it's less than 10. And because we keep adding one to i each iteration, eventually it will get to 10. And this statement right here will be false. So I could also like print out um, i less than 10. So you see how it executes true all the time here. And if I, and it didn't execute that last one that's false because um, if this is true or if this becomes false, it doesn't execute any of the code inside. All right, so that's counting to 10 with a while loop. Um, one of the major reasons I guess a while loop is used is to deal with these Boolean conditions. So if we're developing a game, we might have a variable called game over, right? And that's initially set to false. So we could have a while loop running that would continually run and execute our gameplay code while we're not at the game over condition. So I just print playing game here. And if I run that, you see it just keeps, <laughs> I can scroll up and it keeps playing the game. This just is happening nonstop. So let's imagine in addition to playing, like in addition to having this not game over condition, we had a score. And let's say the goal of this game was to get to 100. So if our score was initially set to zero, let's say this is a super fun game, you know, each iteration you get a, a random value. So if we import random, the, the score at each iteration is just gonna be some random integer that we add onto the score. So score plus equals random dot rand int, let's say it's like one through 10. So if you don't remember random dot rand int, this is something I showed in the math and variables video, the first actual tutorial. And I'll print score and I'll say if score is greater than 100, game over equals true. So watch what happens here. So our score just keeps increasing. Then finally it hits 102. 102 is the first value that is greater than 100. So this variable becomes true and we exit out of this while loop. So while loops help us like control flows based off a of certain Boolean condition. So this game over because it's true or false, it's uh, a Boolean condition. Before we finish up with the explanations of what loops are, and we actually move on to two examples using loops, I wanna quickly go over two more things, and that is the break statement and the continue statement. So imagine we had, in addition to this code right here, we had a line that just said, game is still on, right? And this could be anything. Maybe this is game crucial code right down here. And it comes after this if score is greater than 100, but note that when this game is over at 105, so the game over is true right there at this 105 block, it still prints out game is still on. So it could be still printing out or executing this game, game code. So we'll use the break statement if we wanna just quickly exit out of exit out of a while or for loop. This works with both for loops and while loops. So I could do break, and then if I reran that, you see how 105 is the last value, but it does not print this game is still on here. So it exits out of the while loop. So it would exit out and go to whatever line is at the first indent. So if I printed you lose here, or actually maybe you win, let's say you win see that it doesn't print the game is still on, but it does print this you win. All right, so that's the break statement. It exits out of a for or a while loop really quickly. So right when it's hit, then you're out of the loop. The other statement is the continue statement. So maybe a better way to see the continue statement is if we had, in addition to score is greater than um, 
greater than 50, we had a block that was if score is less than 50. And I wanted to just write continue. And then down here, I, I'm gonna leave this break, but I'm gonna print out some code that just says, you are getting close to winning. So what this continue statement is gonna do is, during the first few iterations, so we go two, three, 13, 20, 23, 29, 31, 36, 46, 50, doesn't print out anything. Uh, but then once we hit 50, it says you're cl getting close to winning, 53 says you're getting close to winning. So what this continue statement did is it exits out of the loop, but it exits out to the top of the loop. So it, it doesn't run any of the code down here, but it run, goes back to the top. So the difference between the continue statement and the break statement is that the continue statement goes back up top to the next iteration of the loop. The break statement exits out of the loop. So you'll find uses of these different statements throughout your like, well, as you get more experience with these loops, I just want to introduce them so you knew that they existed. Okay, let's finish this video off with two examples on the Coding Bat website that I've introduced before. So we'll do, I'm going to drag in the Coding Bat site. Ah, uh, come on. So we're going to do Coding Bat, Python, and we're going to do the warm up two exercises. So the first exercise that we're going to do is called String Times. So try this exercise on your own, and then if you can't figure it out, I'll do it once you unpause the video. Okay, to do this first exercise, we need we note that whatever is in here, we need to re be repeated this many times. So the amount of times we need to repeat something, we'll use a for loop for that. So I'm gonna do for i in range n colon, and then I will do print string, right? Because that's how many times we want whatever. Oh my God, I keep doing control S whenever I use this uh, site. That's how many times we want to, to print out whatever strings in here. And that's represented by this variable. And then the amount of times is represented by the end variable. So if I run that, it says don't print, compute and return a result value. So remember, whenever we use a function, we don't want to Print, we want to return a value. So I'm going to do return string. And this actually doesn't work. As you can see, every time here in the run code, it just does it one time. So we don't actually want to return the string. What we want to do is we want to set a string, like we'll call it final string. That equals, uh, we'll just say that's empty at first. And I just hit control S again. So final string is s empty. Each time we run this loop, we want to add on the string that we're going to print out at the end to the final string. So final string plus equals. And I might have not have mentioned this before, but you can add together. You can concatenate strings using the plus uh, the plus operator. So just like you can add numbers, you can add strings. But adding string just means uh, putting like two words together. So final string plus equals string. And then if I return that, and I don't want to return it in this for loop because then it will return on the first execution. I want to actually go outside the for loop and return it once the for loop is done. So I'm going to do final string. And click go, and everything works for that. So you start out with a blank string, you run a loop that iterates n times, and each time you append, or I guess you not really append, but you add on a new string, so that when you get to the end of the loop, you have that string repeated n times. Cool. Okay, let's do one more exercise. We're gonna do array one, two, three. And this is gonna be a pretty hard problem, array one, two, three. So don't feel bad if you can't figure it out. And pause the video. And when you're ready to see the solution, unpause. All right, to solve this problem, we are given an array of ints, 
and we want to return true if the sequence of numbers 1, 2, 3 appears in the array somewhere. So this is where we're going to have to use that indexing that I showed you when we were going through the player weights um, example earlier in this video. So we have this array, and if I just went ahead and printed, uh, let's say we had a loop and we're iterating through each number in the loop, I just did for number in nums, for num in nums, print num. And I'll just return at the end, return, uh, this will just, just so it doesn't yell at me, I'm just returning this. This is not actually gonna work yet. Uh, don't print, I won't even let me. Okay, it doesn't even let me print, that's annoying. But, so if it, if you're trying to test this and it's, you're having trouble because it won't let you print, what I recommend you do is you can actually just copy this code and put it in uh, your Sublime Text window. So I'm deleting all this and I'm pasting it in here. So for num and nums, I want to print num and I'll take one of the examples they gave me. So we'll take this last example because this last example is a true example. So we got this is our nums. And we have the function definition. Now we need to actually call the function. So we're gonna do array one, two, three of nums. And as you can see, we're printing out each value in that list by just doing what we have here. So the, the tricky thing is, is in this problem, we need to keep track of three numbers at the same time because we're looking for one, two, three. So what we should do instead of doing for num and nums, we should do for i in range nums. And what that allows us to do is we can do something like first value equals nums i, and that's the ith index. Second value equals nums i plus one. So that would be, if this i was zero, we'd have one, and zero plus one would be the first index, so that would give us these two values. Then finally, third value equals nums i plus two. And basically what we're checking is if first value equals equals one and second value equals equals two and third value equals equals three, then we wanna return true, right? And if that never happens, then we know at the end of this we can so where this statement is, so after the loop is done, we can return false. If we run that, uh, a list object cannot be interpreted as an integer. So I can do length num. So before I was trying to um, take the range of a list, I need to actually take the range of the length of the list that we're trying to take the range of. Run that, and we'll actually print out this value. So we'll print out to see if it says true or false. True, cool, so it read that we had the one, two, three here because we got the three indexes. And the one thing to note with this is we're still not done because if I ran this function into our coding bat site, it's actually gonna give us an error. So see if you can figure out the error. So it says list index out of range. And the reason we have the error is when we get to the last index, so let's say we are looking at this bottom example again, or maybe let's say we are looking at this middle example. In this middle example, we don't actually have a one, two, three. We have one, one, two, four, one. So we would iterate starting at this element, then go to this element, then go to this element, then go to this element. And then, so when it got to this element, the first value would be four, Second value would be one, but then we would try to get the third value using this line right here. 
and there wouldn't actually be enough list to get that third value. So this line right here would cause us an error. So what we actually have to do is do length nums minus two, because we want to stop right at this, the last time we can get three elements in a row, because we don't need to check any farther. So we want to stop three before the end. So in this case, we'd stop at this element, this one we'd stop at this element, and this one we'd stop at this element. So if I run that, yay, we got it to work. Cool. All right, that's all we're going to cover in this video. Hopefully you learned what for loops and while loops are. If you have any questions still, leave them down in the comments section. And also make sure to check out that game I showed you at the start of this video. So the game that looked like this. Wow, where is it? Where did the game go? Oh yeah. So make sure to check out this game. There'll be a video on how to build that in the description. All right, thanks for watching guys. Make sure to like this video if you learned something and also subscribe so you don't miss the next tutorial, which I'll be posting sometime next week. Peace.